Now, 2025 is shaping up to be an amazing year when it comes to advancements in 3D printing. We're seeing machines faster than ever before, printing at quality that we would never would have expected at speeds that we're seeing from printers like this. So if you're interested in 3D printing, if you'd like to find a brand new printer that prints extremely fast, has great quality, or maybe you're considering starting your own small business and maybe even a 3D print farm, then you're gonna wanna watch this video because today we're gonna take a look at the Centauri Carbon from Elegoo. This is their first Core XY printer that prints incredibly fast and has good quality. We're gonna share with you what our experience has been. I've been using this printer now for a little bit over a month and a half. What works well, what are the things that they can improve on, and the feedback that I've given them as I've been using this printer. So I'm excited to share with you our experience with this new printer, the Centauri Carbon from Meligo. Let's go ahead and check it out. Now, before taking a look at the printer and all the features and the specs, let's talk about the print quality and the things that we've been printing. Now, we've been printing a lot of things. We've been printing the standard things that come on the SD uh, or the onboard memory of the printer. And I want to share with you, you know, some of the basic things that we've seen from Meligo, and also we see these from other brands. So first of all, we have this little guy right here, right? And this was printed with their, uh, this is pre-sliced, right? So I did nothing to this except hit the button, uh, press print, and then load the filament. But you can see what the quality looks like. You can see what this first layer looks like. So far, I was pretty happy. It's, it's kind of like a boring gray, I get it, but it works. Uh, the next thing we did is we printed another file that was on the, uh, again, the, the USB or SD of the machine. And this is what we have here. Uh, this tower printed well, and you can see the overall quality that we have here, right? No stringing, I've done no cleanup. This is exactly how it came off the printer. So it really did well again. We took another print of theirs, and this is also onboard memory or USB stick, right? A scraper, and I just wanted to print it. And I printed it with different filament. I did a silk uh, PLA because I wanted to see how this would look. And this is the kind of quality that we got. I was also happy with this. No stringing, everything looked good. Um, great first layer, and you can see what this first layer looks like right here. Uh, no issues here at all. The last thing I printed uh, using, again, what they provided is uh, this, again, Centauri printer. And the interesting thing about this is that at first when I started looking at this, I said, is this just a sample model? But it's more than just a sample model because it's actually a poop tray. So you can actually put this behind your printer to collect all the poop that it deposits, and it has the look of the printer. And it also has the ability where you can see here, it can come off. So you put it in, it falls into place, and you get to go. Again, good quality. You can see no real uh, significant or anything like in the layer lines going on there. Great first layer. And I thought, hey, this looks really, really good. So let's start putting our own prints and slicing using their Orca version of the software so we can see what things look like. So one of the things I printed, and this is an actual headphone uh, mount. You can see right here, this guy turned out really nice. This is using a combination of materials. Uh, I went with a copper uh, PLA, and this is Elegoo's uh, PLA, right? So this is theirs, and I'm, again, I'm using their standard settings, and as you can see here, really, really nice quality. I get a little bit closer, so you can see what's going on here. This actually printed in this orientation, but you can see a really, really good finish, right? Uh, I then used some black matte PLA for the bottom, and you can see the bottom layer turned out really nice too, and you can see what the finish is like here. Really, really good finish all the way around. If we get a little bit, make sure that's uh, nice and crispy for you guys, so you can see what's going on there. That was really nice. I then, as I switched to other PLA, and I didn't have any um, PLA CF or any other kind of materials. All I had was some, some PLA. I've requested some other material types uh, to test from them, but I haven't really gotten a good mixture of materials yet. And as you guys know, I do a lot of printing in PLA with our print farm. And here what we have is in, uh, a base. Uh, this is again sliced uh, and then also then printed, but using the same material that I have here. And this is also a silk, right? And this is the quality I got, no stringing, Everything came out really nice. Look at that first layer. Really, really clean. And again, really happy with this. This, this turned out really nice out of this printer. And keep in mind that I, I'm calling this a first look because I know there's still a lot of changes that are gonna be coming with this printer. And I just don't wanna call it a review yet until we get final firmware, final software, everything is final. Uh, the other thing that I did was I wanted to do a standard tolerance test. And I'm gonna bring this little thing here so you can see this for a second. 
And this printed also really, really well. There was some slight stringing. You can see the slight stringing right there. Let's see if I can get that in focus. You can see it. Let's see, you can see that right there. So there is some slight stringing that took place, but all the tips came out nice. You can see again, everything is pretty clean, all right? You can see over here, there's a little bit stringing. I haven't cleaned this up. I wanted to show you exactly what came out of the printer. You can see also here the overhangs and you can see the finish here. This is a really good print, especially for a printer that I would not put it in the production level firmware yet, right? Because I've been testing this out. So this worked out really well. And then if you're worried about these right here, they come out. See, these are, so they did really well as well. Now, the other thing I printed on it was uh, for some of the stuff that Nilda does, I printed out a jewelry stand. So this is gonna be for some of the laser engraving stuff that she's doing, where she's gonna be at a pop-up event and wants to be able to have some bracelets. So this was printed on the printer again, silk PLA. I, have, I don't know, I forget which brand this is. I have it here on the side, so I gotta check in a second. Uh, but this is what we printed. And again, high speed. And what I like, uh, this is the thing that I look at, is that the silk color of the PLA hasn't changed. So there's no variation, right? So you don't see issues with heat. You don't see issues with speed. And I don't see any uh, you know, deformation taking place. The other thing is all the parts fit well. So this model, I really didn't have any problems with, with the parts themselves. And this is something that we can take apart and put together really easily. And all of these printed at the same time on the same build plate. So these weren't pieces, but you know, these printed in this orientation, right? These two standing up, and then this printed in this orientation coming up. And then you can see again how nicely the finishes here, and then also that first layer, which is really important. Now the Centauri Carbon has a build plate of 256 by 256 by 256. Now print speeds up to 500 millimeters per second. And then it also has a temperature, a nozzle temperature of 320 top, and then also bed temperature of 110, which means it's gonna be able to print some you know, good material. So if you're looking at things beyond PLA, PETG, ASA, if you think about the PLA, CF, all those materials should be fine with this. Uh, I thought at some point that this was a heated chamber, but I can't really find anything that would allow me to enable it or disable it. So I don't know if this has a heated chamber. Uh, that's a question that I have out to Elegu. Now, as we take a look at the inside, one of the things I'll do is I'll highlight this other print. Again, this is what with Elegu Silk PLA. And I just wanna show you this guy right here. Yeah, this is my surprise print. This is a giant dice tower, right? I'll put all the link in the information uh, below, but you can see how absolutely fantastic this dice tower looks. Uh, this took hours to print. I gotta look and see what the log said, but we ran this. And when you look at the actual detail, notice how nice and clean this is. No issues, first layer, I noticed some things going on right here. You see this right here? I don't know if this is the model or what was going on, but saw this. Uh, it could be also the filament itself, but I use their PLA settings. Uh, outside of that, I didn't see anything else. Detail looks really, really good. You can see that right there. And there is no, there were no supports, right? So spectacular detail. Now the build plate, and one of the things I wanna highlight about the printer on the inside is that it does have a light, but the light, is just too, too light. I don't know why manufacturers, printer manufacturers are still doing these small things. Now with the camera here, it looks like it's really bright, but it really isn't. I just want you to notice the shadow area that you have beyond this point. So you can see that it really isn't illuminating everything. And I know that many of us would mod this and add a camera, but I would love, love, love if printers like this came, especially the new ones in 2025, came with adequate lighting. It does have a camera, and it has an AI camera on the side. And I think the AI camera is adequate, but one of the things that you also learn is that when I was doing the review, I found that the, at least in my pre-release version, right, because this isn't a, a final product, I would say, the actual streaming is not, uh, is not continual, right? So you have to hit the play button. You'll see this in a second, then it will start to show, and then it will, it will I, want, I don't want to say it will time out, but it will play for a certain duration of time and it will stop. Some of my other printers that have the actual uh, the ability to do streaming, stream con continuously. So let's take a look at this build plate. Build plate, a PEI build plate. You can see that right there, All right? You see that it has also, there's two sides to it. I'll flip this over. This side, you'll notice it has smooth. On this side, it has texture. I have not had any issues with any type of adhesion uh, whatsoever. Everything uh, works fine. 
when it came to prints and it, things come off easily. Uh, let me take a closer look. I'm going to bring you inside of the printer so you can see what's going on. Now this is what the inside of the printer looks like. Here you have your print head. You can see that this is a Core XY. I didn't really see kind of any heating or blowing element outside of, you know, here on the side, nothing. So that's why I was, I'm still curious if it does have anything. Uh, but it's pretty simple implementation. The one thing I will say that I really, really like about this printer, and I can't say this of all printers, when I'm loading filament, I don't have to take off the, the last top and pull out the PTF uh, tube. It just loads and unloads nicely. Um, like on my uh, Kitty Plus, I find myself having to take off this little tube that you see right here often to get it to feed correctly. For whatever reason, it doesn't go in enough. So when it starts to load, I don't really, uh, I'm not able to load it automatically as it should. I have to kind of feed it and then I put the little tube on. Not the case with this one. Both removing filament and adding filament is a breeze. Now, a couple things that you'll notice here is first of all, on the side, you do have your USB. I kind of like it in the front right there. And I also like the fact that there's enough space here between the screen and the USB that basically gives you the space where you don't have to worry about uh, banging it up or anything. So I like that it's kind of recessed. The screen is highly legible and easy to navigate. You can see here that you have your on and off light, right? And it even shows on the screen, which I think is very clever. I like these little nice little touches where you can see the light turn on and off on the screen. You then also have here your temperature. You have your, again, your bed, and then you have your nozzle. Then you have your uh, fan speed, right? And none of the other things here are clickable. You have your IP address, but nothing else you can play with. You can see here the models, and we've been printing quite a bit. You can see if it's on the local USB, right? And then also your printing history. You have over here um, your controls, right? So you have your uh, prepare, you have your fan, and then you have your extruder. Again, loading is super simple. Over here you have, again, brightness. Oops, let's go back. Uh, brightness settings. And what I'll do is I'll, you know, I can't make it any brighter. I can make it uh, the screen dimmer, but not any brighter. I wish I could do something with, with the light there. Screen off, always on. In this case, I got my language settings, my Z offset, and then time zone settings. And then here's where you would check for your firmware. I'm currently running version 1.14. If we go into this area, you have your automatic bed leveling, your P tuning, input shaping, and then one uh, click self check. I have not done anything special to this printer. It's been running stock. I haven't run any of those settings. Just when you open it up, you take it out of the box and you start it up. That's what I did because that's what a lot of people expect nowadays. I'm going to go back into the print history. And then what we're going to do is I'll take a look at a couple things. So if you take a look at this one right here, the jewelry stand that I showed you, this one right here, let's go back for a second. That one looks like it took, oh, over here, print history, looks like it took a little bit over three hours to print. And the actual parts of the stand, I keep on hitting the wrong one. The skull took 10 hours. So this guy right here, when you think about, again, all the, the look, this look, 10 hours to print. So that'll give you a sense. The other ones were, you know, normal print jobs. So we won't go into all those details. Uh, the printer, I would say also, so we're going to go ahead and put something to print. I'm going to go ahead and put the, the Benchy to print. Let's see if it's on here. Yeah, there it is. I'm going to go ahead and put this one to print. This is pretty fast and the quality I thought is really good. Um, and I want to show you what the actual print experience is. So we're just going to go ahead and start it. What I find is that the printer is loud. It's not as quiet as I'd like it to be. And then also we we'll just go ahead and pan up a little bit right here so you can see this. Uh, the other thing that I find is that the tint is, is so tint that you just can't see what's going on in the printer. So if you want to see what's going on in the printer, you have to open it up right to be able to see it. Because as you can see, it's very difficult to see. Now, this is a good thing if you have a printer like this in your bedroom or in a common space, you don't want it blinding uh, like, like if it was a tower, right? A light tower of sort. But I, I do wish that the, that the printer was a little bit more quiet. It's going to start up. And let's just uh, get a little bit closer here for a second so you can see it. And a couple boring things will happen first. It's going to touch the bed. It's going to go ahead and do its leveling. And this is what you would expect from a printer of this type, you know, I don't really see anything else uh, out of the ordinary going on. You notice on the back, that's where the poop tray is. And it does do its standard cleaning and what you would expect from printers of this type. Now starting up your printer, you can hear that the fan now just kicked off. Um, we're looking at around, right now it raised the temperature to 248 C. The bed is 48. 
and then the cabinet temperature is right now 24 or 25. I don't see any active heating taking place, so it's hovering um, at that temperature. And we're going to see the printer start in a couple seconds. I'm going to show you what the sound looks like, you know, just running, uh, just putting a, uh, a sound meter next to it. So you can get a sense of, again, what my experience is. So fan is pretty loud. And there's a lot of noise in my room, too, because I have a lot of printers going. But we're going to be focusing on this printer so you can see what's going on here. Let me stay quiet for a second. Let's close the door. Let's open this up. So you can see that it is uh, a little bit loud. Definitely not quiet. All right, guys, so the actual print process is now started and let's take a look at you know, what's the sound like uh, during, during the actual prints. So I'm going to stay quiet. I'm going to close the door. Okay, a little bit. And we'll just let it continue to run so you can see what this process looks like. And this is Silk PLA, so we be interested to see what the quality of this turns out as it's running. But as you can see, good adhesion, print looks good, started out nicely, and we'll just continue to let it run. All right, so let's take a look at what this Benchy looks like. So here we go. Again, this is using a Silk PLA. You can see you know, just some banding. Not so much, um, not the print itself. So if you take a look at that, the print looks good, but obviously there's some color differences going on there. So really that's due to temperature shifts. You can see first layer looks good. What the back looks like. Things are almost there. And this is a 15 minute Benchy. See the quality that you see there. And all in all, I think this is a great benchy for 15 minutes. It's not bad at all. all right, even look at the front right here. That's pretty nice and smooth. So this is a winner, guys. I think this is definitely a winner. And again, for 15 minutes, uh, I will say that even though the print itself is 15 minutes, like from start to print, it was 23 minutes from warming up, leveling, and getting through the process. Now, keep in mind, that the printer that I have, this is a first release, right? So I'm not gonna say that this is final software, final firmware, nothing is fine on this, so it can only get better, right? So I would expect changes coming, more changes to accelerate things, but overall, this is the quality that we're getting and what you can expect. So guys, that wraps up our review. See you in the next video.